What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the Vision Pro Experience. It's been a little bit. How's it going? Been traveling a ton. And for those wondering, oh, are you not uploading anymore because you stopped using the Vision Pro? Absolutely not. Mostly used it every day that I've been home, which hasn't been too often, honestly, the past couple months. But we're back and we got Vision OS 2 today. So let's talk about it because, oof, there's a lot of love-hate relationship going on right now. Uh, with these updates. So you know what, I wanna get kind of the bad out of the way first. Let's be honest, this should not have been Vision OS 2 that we got today. This is more of a Vision OS 1.5 because what we did get in updates are welcomed and we're gonna go through all the ones you saw on stage as well as uh, a lot of the ones that weren't announced in the keynote. I'm gonna put on the Vision Pro, we're gonna dive in, show you how they all work and uh, if they're cool or not. Now there is a lot of cool stuff happening with capturing spatial video uh, in this space, way beyond what you can do with the iPhone or capturing spatial video through these cameras. And I just made a dedicated video to that over on my main channel. So if you haven't seen that, go check it out in the link in the description. I'm gonna put this guy on here, but there's a number of features and they they do this to all the, all the devices. The coolest stuff, they've started doing this thing the past couple of years and all tech brands have started doing it where they announce it, they demo it, they show it off, and then they say coming later this year, which we all know means like December 29th. So editing spatial videos in Final Cut Pro coming later this year, which when they first announced that a couple months ago, pretty sure it said uh, coming this spring. So we're not gonna be able to see that right now. Uh, by far, my favorite feature is the new panoramic productivity mode for the Mac virtual display. So right now, if I do the virtual display with my Mac, uh, it keeps the same aspect ratio as the computer monitor and you can resize it, make it huge and whatnot. But this, you'll actually be able to make it a ultra wide screen and like in various different forms, like a little bit ultra wide and then just insane panoramic wrap around the equivalent of two 4K monitors and they're going to up the resolution, they're going to up the uh, detail, the clarity, and so I'm really excited to see that. But again, this is coming later this year. So, uh, the new environments, we've been waiting on two environments that have said coming soon since the original release and we still just got one today, we got Bora Bora. Uh, I forget the name of the other one, but that one, is just, I don't know what's going on with these environments, but catch multiple games at once in the Apple TV app. So I guess you can watch, uh, I don't really watch sports, but if you want to watch uh, soccer and baseball at the same time, you can have up to five separate views of sporting events. So I'm sure a lot of people will enjoy that. But again, coming later this year. All right, so there's all the downsides and the stuff that we have to wait on. But now let's take a look at what we can actually play with as of today with developer beta preview one. I feel like I always have to say this every year, but uh, before you leave your comments saying, how do I get the beta? You have to have a developer's license. So that's how you get the beta. If you want the public beta, which will be free to everyone, that will start in July. All right, now we're inside Vision OS 2 here. And the first thing to take note of that everyone was super excited for is to get our apps pulled up. We no longer have to press the button right on top here. We have a new gesture, which is to open our palm face up. We see that little dot right there and I can just tap and that is supposed to bring up my home button. Gotta love beta. There we go. So that brings up our uh, home screen here, which is really, really cool. Um, the other thing it does, and I love this gesture, is when you get that dot, if I turn my hand over, I can now see the time, my volume, and my battery. And if I just pinch and hold, and if I press and hold, I can easily adjust volume right there, or I can just tap, and that's gonna bring up my control center but I love this like flip over to see this. This is exactly what we wanted. I think one of the first videos I did on the Vision Pro, I talked about how I would love to see gestures where like we had HUD displays pop up out of our wrist, kind of like a watch. And this is exactly what I was talking about. So I can't wait to see them expand on this sort of design even more, make it more customizable. Uh, so that's really cool. So if we go into our photos here, and we have a normal 2D photo. This is not a spatial one. Obviously it was taken on a bigger camera, but now we have this little box right here that if I tap that, I can convert any regular photo into a spatial one. So it's gonna analyze it for depth, 
basically take its best guess. And now we have a beautiful spatial photo. You can just grab any photos, whether it's taken on a legit camera or just a phone. There's an old phone camera. Now we have a spatial photo that feels like, you know, it's in a box and we have this cool view. I'm sure it still looks 2D to you guys, but uh, yeah, if you have a vision, if you have a Vision Pro, I highly recommend checking this one out. Also, I have the ability to do share play with photos now. So if I were to have, you know, say someone else, uh, you know, in their persona FaceTiming in right there, I could have my photos app up and we could be scrolling through and it's kind of a cool way with friends, family, whoever to kind of go in and be like, oh, look at this photo and check them out together and stuff. So that's really cool. And lastly, while we're in the Photos app, we do have the same redesign that we got in the, you know, iOS, macOS. They kind of put the same design language everywhere. To be honest, I'm still very much getting used to it. Uh, it's definitely different to me, but uh, yeah, it's, it's a little bit of a redesign. I guess what's also new is if we grab a video, we can actually trim it now. So let me go ahead. So we have a video here. I can go up. And now we can actually trim. We, we haven't had any editing features on Vision OS. Wonder if it would be easier if I just grab this in. Yeah, now we can just grab our in and out points. And we can just trim it to our liking. So it's pretty basic. All right, so this is what most people were asking for. And I don't even remember if they said it in the keynote, to be honest, but you can now rearrange all the apps and you do it the same way you do it on iOS. I can just press and hold on any of these, pick it up, and then you just kind of grab them and move them around. There's the new passwords app that's everywhere. Can you make folders together? Nope, no folders yet. That'll be, uh, I'm sure next year. <laughs> uh, but hey, I'll take being able to rearrange them for now because right now all these apps are a complete mess. And so I'm excited to go into a hierarchy and you can go in to your compatible app section as well. Can I drag it out of here? Nope. So it's got to stay in here, but you can uh, rearrange them. Uh, as I mentioned, if we go into environments, um, yeah, this one's still coming soon, but now we have Bora Bora, which if I go full immersive, King, okay, does it not? Apparently it doesn't want to go full immersive. I took a screen recording before, so I'll throw that up. Uh, but it's a beautiful location. I really do like it. They did a fantastic job on it. Um, but apparently it takes months and months to create those. I don't know. I don't make these things, but we got one new one. This one I was excited for and then a little bit sad. And it is you can now, while you're fully immersed, see your apple keyboard through the full immersion so if i had a magic keyboard right here and i went full immersion it would keep my keyboard in frame so if i had my mac screen i could still type uh, and that's incredible and i think the magic mouse also works but unfortunately if you're like me and you use a non-magic keyboard keyboard uh, it doesn't do anything it doesn't even try uh, it's not even a bad key it just nope Gotta have the Apple keyboard. Apparently they made some enhancements to personas. So once you go up to Vision OS 2, they'll have you rescan your persona. Uh, apparently it's just more accurate skin tones, uh, better clothing colors, and I think it shows clothing more. And said also something about backgrounds and everything. So we just have some more enhancements. I gotta dive deeper into that. I haven't called anyone and I still have to do my rescan. Uh, but that's really cool to see. I'm happy that we're gonna kind of see continued improvements into uh, personas. And apparently we can now airplay to Vision Pro. So obviously we've been able to airplay from Vision Pro to like a TV. But now if I wanted to show off this video of the Bora Bora thing, if I hit airplay, in theory, this is supposed to show up. Maybe that's a setting I need to change. Or maybe that's coming soon. Uh, it will now work on trains. To be honest, I didn't know that was an issue before. I figured if you put it in travel mode and it worked on an airplane, that it would work on a train. Yeah, my, the mindfulness app apparently knows when you're breathing. I gotta check this out. Follow your breathing app. You can now sense the rhythm of your breath.
There it goes out. As I, I see it a little bit. All right. And finally, this this one I was actually really excited for, and it has to do with the guest user. So right now, one of the biggest annoyances that I have uh, is when I want to give this to someone else to try out, they have to go through the whole setup process. Press and hold, rescans the eyes, uh, you gotta do the three dot things to measure the pupils. And I get it, like if you're showing someone one time and they have to go through that like three minute setup, fine. But you know, at home a lot, there's a lot of times where I'm like, ooh, Michelle, I want you to like see this cool new demo thing or play this game or check whatever out. And if I'm, if she's always having to go through that reset up process, we like, we never share it anymore. Or we try to like just pass it off and then she has to like look off of the thing because it's measured in my pupils. It's just a bad experience. And so now you can save your most recent guest eyes and hand data so they can easily skip their next setup and get right back to the experience. So I wonder if right now I turn on guest mode. Maybe it does it automatically, maybe it's in settings, but I'll have to test that one out as well. But I guess the way it works is if I throw it in guest mode and let's say Michelle is the next person to get it, then it'll save that data. And if we keep switching back and forth, it'll keep her data when I put it in guest mode. But then if I gave it to another friend and they reset it up, then she would then have to reset it up again. So it's still not a perfect system, but there's that. And uh, with that, we don't get the biggest thing that I think we were all hoping for, which was saved setups. So all those fun office builds that I did before where I set everything up around the office and then it resets every time you, you know, turn it off completely that uh, still hasn't changed. So, so as I said in the beginning, I definitely think this is more of a Vision OS 1.5 update. Got a bunch of really cool features. By the end of the year, we'll have some extra cool features, uh, but we're still missing a lot of the stuff that I think uh, would make the market even more open to an expensive product like this. For what it does, it does better than anyone else on the market, but there's a lot of stuff that's still missing. So hopefully we keep getting updates in the coming months and see more and more features to come. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.